Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It's been an honor for us to present this 27 direct diplomatic forum, which is organized by Air World Service Voice of Indonesia. Our diplomatic forum is live broadcast through youtube.com, at VOI Indonesia, and Facebook, The Voice of Indonesia, and streaming www.voinews.id. Today we are going to discuss a topic on disaster is around. Are we ready yet? Before we start our diplomatic forum today, we would like to invite Bapak Agung Susatyo, Director of RID World Service Voice of Indonesia. The floor is yours. Okay. Distinguished Mr. Sulema Yusuf, RRI's Director of Program and Production, representing RRI's President Director. His Excellency, Mr. Musa Fumi Ishi, Japanese Ambassador to Indonesia, Mr. Bernardo Swisnu Wijaya, Deputy Director of Prevention and Preparedness of Indonesia's National Disaster Management Authority, BNPB, Mr. Sukpandaru Priyatmoko, Chairman of Indonesia Association of Geologists, Mr. Freddy Dolu, the uh, representative of Supervisor Board, RRI, RRI Board Directors, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, let us extend our gratitude to the God Almighty as we are getting here in Diplomatic Forum talk show. This is the 27th edition of Diplomatic Forum since it has been organized. Dipl Diplomatic Forum is a talk show discussing international issues by inviting speakers from various cycles and related institutions. This is the time the theme of Diplomatic Forum is Disaster is Round. Are we ready yet? The theme institution considering Indonesia is a country that often experiences disasters such as landslides, floods, hurricanes, earthquakes, and tsunamis. The last is the earthquake in Central Sulawesi, measuring 7.7 .7 on the Richter scale. Disaster in Central Sulawesi claim more than 2,000 lives, enduring more than 4,600. When a natural disaster occurs, the community is also powerless to anticipate and overcome it. Panic and surrender of offered occur in every natural disaster. As a result, the number of deaths and material loss in several disaster cases in this country is still quite high. The talk show is also had to commemorate the International Day for Disaster Reduction, which falls on October 13. Finally, we would like to thank our honorable speakers and honorable guests who are coming to the talk show. Once again, thank you, and we welcome you all to the Diplomatic Forum. Thank you. Thank you, Bapa Agung Susatyo, for the warm welcome and remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, now let's follow a remark by Bapa Soleiman Yusuf, Director of Program and Productions, representing President Director of LPPRRI, Bapa Rohanuddin. Rohanuddin, the floor is yours. This thing is His Excellency, Mr. Masafumi Isi. Japanese Ambassador to Indonesia, Mr. Bernardus Wisnu Wijaya, Deputy Chief for Prevention and Preparedness at Indonesia National Disaster from BNPB, Mr. Sukmandaru Prihatmoko, Chairman of Ikatan Ahli Geologi Indonesia, RRI Supervisor Board, Mr. Fredin Dolu, 
Pak Agung Susatio, Head of Office of Indonesia, Pak Edi Sukmana, Bu Sumarina, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of our RRE President Director, I would like to extend my congratulations on the organizing of the 27 Diplomatic Forum by RRE World Service Voice of Indonesia. This month, the United Nations commemorates the International Day for Disaster Reduction. This commemoration is intended to encourage all communities and government to take a role in creating communities with disaster resiliency. We know that Indonesia is a country that often experiences disasters. When a natural disaster occurs, the community seems to be powerless to anticipate and overcome it, resulting in a high number of deaths and material loss. Anticipatory efforts by the community are always late. Delays in anticipation action are caused by lack of information and knowledge about disaster option, but from the government and other authorities. In addition, disaster management issues have not been a priority in regional development, not to mention the matter of fund to overcome disaster. In this regard, RRE, World Service Voice of Indonesia organizes diplomatic forum to show them disaster is around. Are we ready yet? Featuring prominent speakers. Finally, we would like to thank our honorable speakers and honorable guests who are coming to the talk show. Once again, thank you, and we welcome you all to the Diplomatic Forum. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Thank you, Bapak Soleiman Yusuf. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Today, Diplomatic Forum will be hosted by Daulat Pane, and we'll discuss a topic on disaster is around. Are we ready yet? In this Diplomatic Forum talk show, we also invite your participation to join our dialogue by presenting your questions directly to our speakers. And for the sake of convenience, we need to ask you to set your cell phone to the silent mode. And now I will call the host of today's Diplomatic Forum, Daulat Pane. RRE World Service Voice of Indonesia presents Diplomatic Forum, a talk show analyzing strategic issues and global perspective. Of Indonesia, he has been assigned at Korea Broadcasting Service KBS for two times, from 2006 to 2010 and from 2016 to 2018. Well, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's start our program, Diplomatic Forum. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today our Diplomatic Forum is going to discuss a topic on disaster around. Is around, are we ready yet? Are we ready yet? So this diplomatic forum is a live broadcast on YouTube at Voice of Indonesia and also Facebook, the Voice of Indonesia. It can also be accessed through streaming www.voinews.id and you can also join this program by sending your comments or question via our Facebook fan page Voice of Indonesia and the Voice of Indonesia. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before we start this diplomatic forum, I would like to invite you all to see what is happening here in this video, and then from this, we will discuss 
this topic disaster is around are we ready yet and this is the video Well, there was a video on several natural disasters and we will discuss this with our distinguished speaker. I would like to, call to come on the stage, His Excellency Masafumi Ishii, Japanese Ambassador to Indonesia. <laughs> Welcome, you to get this it on the middle. I think uh, it's better used it there. Uh, okay. Thank you, Your Excellency. And next I would like to come to the stage Pak Bernadus Wisnuwijaya from the National Disaster Management Agency. <laughs> Welcome sir. Which is it? And Pak Sukmandaru Prihatmoko, Chairman of Ikatan Ali Geologi Indonesia or Indonesian Association of Geologists. Selamat datang, Pak. Have a seat. Well, ladies and gentlemen. I just would like to repeat what the Pak Suleiman Yusuf said in his opening speech that Indonesia is often experiences disaster such as landslides, floods, hurricanes, earthquakes, and also tsunamis. The last was an earthquake in central Sulawesi measuring 7.5 seven on the Richter scale. What a huge tremor actually. Disaster in Central Sulawesi claimed more than two thousand lives. More than two thousand lives. The number of injured reached four thousand six hundred and twelve people. And there were one thousand three hundred and nine people who were still missing. This is our responsibility. Every time a natural disaster occurs, at the time the community is also helpless. Helpless, cannot do anything. We cannot fight the mother, the mother earth. In anticipating it and overcoming, panic and surrender often occurs in every natural disaster, and as a result, a number of fatalities and material losses in several cases of disasters in the country is still quite high. So this is why we are here today, Ambassador Ishii and the other two speakers. We would like to discuss this. And ladies and gentlemen, I would like to start this diplomatic forum with the first question to Pak Bernardus. Oh no, I would like to say to Pak Prihat Moko, we talk about the geology first. Why? Tsunamis, earthquakes, is there. 
Yes, Prabhupada uh, Moko. So, what we know that the earthquake in Palu Dongala, it, is related, it was related to the liquefaction. So, what is the condition of the land in Indonesia in general? And are the soil conditions vulnerable to disasters? Yes, please. Yeah, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think first of all, I'd like to thank to RRI for inviting me uh, on behalf of the Indonesian Association of Geologists uh, to share uh, maybe something related to the geology. So talking about the liquefaction, I think uh, this, this should not be uh, split from the earthquake itself because the, the major phenomena, the major event is the earthquake. So the liquefaction is uh, like the, what's the effect or something that's caused by in the uh, earthquake. So I think if I want to explain a little bit uh, about the liquefaction, there should be some certain condition, uh, geological condition, I mean, that uh, should be uh, triggered by earthquake to become a liquefaction uh, phenomena. Mm. So the main thing about the geological condition uh, related to the liquefaction is there should be an area with uh, geological condition contain of uh, loose sands with uh, water saturated. So whenever you have an area like that, uh, and then there should be some condition too, uh, especially what's the thickness of that uh, sand, loose sand bed, and what's the uh, number of the, the amount of the water there and whenever uh, you got an earthquake some uh, happen some I in that area that should be will trigger will create the liquefaction because uh, if, if we can explain it because the the water uh, pressure will lose their 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 strength mm -hmm. so the or the soil or the rock which before is, is a solid condition that we will change it to the uh, like liquid condition. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the, the what's the, I can explain uh, the mechanism w why the, liqui the liquefaction happen. Okay. So uh, back to the geological condition, I think we can map uh, some part of Indonesia. Where's the, Indone where's the part of Indonesia which has this kind of condition. Uh, we can identify, I think, uh, whenever we have an area, flat area near the coast or flat area uh, near uh, the lake uh, or X lake because sometimes lake is uh, becoming uh, dry and become an area, flat area mm -hmm. and the, the rock or the soil is not uh, or unconsolidated and there's water, a lot of water there. So we just need an uh, earthquake. Yes. Say, uh, people said about five scale, mm -hmm. it will trigger or generate the Lugi vaccine. Okay. So, can I say in short, uh, that this Lugi vaccine will not be dangerous if there is no earthquake happening in that area? Correct. Yeah. Yes. I think, uh, yeah, generally say yes. Because uh, you can see in, in Kalimantan, I think there are a lot of. A geological phenomena, a geological condition that may be uh, like what I said before, mm -hmm. with loose sands, loose, loose rock, with water saturated. But there's no liquefaction because there is no earthquake. Okay, thank you, Fabrian Moko. So since that you say that this liquefaction is triggered by the earthquake, so is there any map or just say data that, uh, I mean, which shows that uh, some places in Indonesia is uh, prone to earthquake? Uh, yes, I think uh, in general term, I think the Badan Geologi or Geological Ag Agency has already released a map, but what I saw is they only released uh, in the specific area that they thought this would be potential or vulnerable for, mm -hmm. for the liquefaction, mm -hmm. especially like in Palu itself, they already released a map uh, of the potential for liquefaction back in 2012. Mm. So there are some other map too, like in Padang, in Aceh, I think they already released it. But 
I think we need to work, to uh, force to push the badan geologi to also do all of mapping to all of the city, especially or part of Indonesia. Okay, so it's it means that we have not do not have yet a, a real data. Uh, the whole Indonesia. The whole Indonesia, but w uh, is there any? <coughs> just say uh, maybe. Uh, which is maybe can help us that this area in Sumatra, like you said, that okay, there will be Padang and Aceh. What about in Java, on Kalimantan or Sulawesi, something like that? Uh, yeah, Jakarta itself. I think I saw the map for Jakarta because Jakarta is really big city, a lot of people there. So I think Badan Geologi already put some attention there. Uh, Surabaya, I never seen it, but I hope that we have it. <laughs> uh, but the the good thing is that. Uh, we, or Badan Geologi, and us also in the IAGI, uh, Indonesian Association of Geologists, also have some map indicating where's the fault or fracture mm -hmm. that may be uh, what, generating or potential for big for earthquake in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. But it's already a uh, famous map uh, that uh, what, we can we can refer it, we can refer to it, like uh, in in Sulawesi. Everybody or every geologist will know that there is a big fault called Palu Koro Fault, which is running from Palu City going down to the south, mm -hmm. and then they turn to the east to the Lake Matano. Mm -hmm. I think that's very famous fault, and so so in that way uh, we have to really pay attention along that belt, along that uh, trace, uh, where is uh, the area which is. Uh, really vulnerable for liquefaction. Okay, um, I still one have one more question for sure. uh, Fred Moko. Um, concerning what is ha what it was happening in Palu Donggala and its surroundings, did we know before, or was there any information before that uh, the condition of the land in this area it has I mean, it had liquefaction, and do the people know about it? The people of Palu, Donggala, or its surrounding. Well, I, like I said before, that uh, there is a research result by uh, Badan Geologi or Geological Agency back in 2012. They already released the map, uh, which part of Palu City, Palu Town, which uh, really potential for liquefaction. But when I when we asked to the Badan Geologi, where's uh, you release that map? They said that this already present it, they already give it to the local government, something like that. And and yeah, of course, uh, I think that, that should be our main problem here, not only in Palu. I think that's uh, some of the research results is still not really being implemented uh, in the in the root level. Okay, thank you, Praja Um Ambassador Ishi, uh, as long as I know that uh, the condition of Geologically, the condition of Japan is not so much different what we have here in Indonesia. So, is Japan also in the category of a country which is uh, disaster prone? Thank you. And uh, in short, answer is yes, of course. But before, before talking more details about it, let me first express my heartfelt condolence and sympathy for what happened in Central Sulawesi. And I think Indonesian people helped us last time when we had a big earthquake, 2011. So Thank this you. is this time is our turn to help you, whatever we can. And uh, we want to be friends in need for you. Mm. And uh, our self-defense force sent transportation airplane C-130, and uh, they tr helped the transportation good between Palu and the Balikpapan. And uh, three billion rupiah worth emergency goods have been already delivered to Palu. Palu yes. And in addition to that, we have more than 20 billion rupiah worth donation collected by the Japanese uh, companies uh, working here. So our help has been uh, all Japan. And I think we are now entering into uh, reconstruction stage. Yes. So the JICA has already sent survey team over there. And then they'll come back again towards the end of November with a draft blueprint 
for the reconstruction of the area, where I think the information about uh, liquidation is crucial in order to decide where to relocate the, the new uh, houses. Yes. Uh, by the way, based upon the, their initial research, tsunami may have been caused by liquidation around the coastline, which is a rare case. Mm. Uh, so I, I think they are working on, on that, uh, the cause of tsunami. And having said all this, uh, direct answer to your question, yes, we are a disaster-prone country. Mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, like Indonesia, we have earthquake, we have tsunami, we have landslide, we have volcanic eruption. Mm -hmm. even in addition to that, we even have snow uh, disaster, <laughs> snow-related disaster. <laughs> and typhoon this year yes. has been more serious than, I think, uh, monsoon. We, we have had uh, 26 typhoons this year already. And then 14 out of 26 had a direct impact on Japan. So actually, Japan is more, in a sense, dangerous and more disaster prone than Indonesia. And actually, the insurance is very expensive in Japan. But having said all this, actually, in the past 20 years, over 90% of fatality comes from earthquake and tsunami, the same as it is in Indonesia. So I think earthquake and tsunami are the most difficult challenge you have to face. But having said all this, I think positive note is this means there is a room for cooperation between Japan and Indonesia. We have the same problem. We need to share the solution. We can cooperate with, with each other. Yes, Ambassador Masafumishi, as uh, the same question with uh, Pri pa Priyat Moko, uh, does Japan already mapping the areas which is prone to uh, this natural disaster? Yeah, we, we have a disaster map. We have warning system, we have sharing information system, but uh, you know today's main theme, are we ready yet? Yes. I think nobody is ready yet, because uh, you know, natural disaster always exceeds, exceeds our expectation. So what we can do is to learn from it, learn lessons from it, and be better prepared. But nobody is perfect. Th that's where we are. Okay, thank you, Ambassador Ishii. Um, but Bernardus. Um, Ambassador Ishii said that we are not ready yet, and maybe nobody's ready yet. So how do you uh, assess with, uh, on this statement, Pa Bernardus? Okay, thank you. Uh, before I directly answer your question, I, I would like, uh, on behalf of uh, uh, Indonesian government, to... Uh, extend our sincere thanks and also gratitude to uh, the government of Japan for your uh, relief assistance to us in Palu. Uh, and also Japan uh, have a uh, commitment, has the commitment to support us in recovery program. Thank you very much. And I also want to add some information about the mapping before I directly answer your question. Please, we Robert. already have the uh, map, not only hazard map, but also risk map. You can uh, see in our application using Android, we call Inaris. And from the uh, application, you will know about uh, what is the threat, what is the hazard in your position right now, you can open it. I think the problem is uh, how to communicate, how to communicate the information is the big deal for us. The risk communication is always the big deal for us. Because in the normal condition, there is, uh, I think no one want to see the, the risk in surround them. We already have. Now the challenge is how to use it as a reference of uh, spatial planning. Mm. When we try to make a plan for spatial planning, we, ha we have to consider with the uh, threat, the uh, hazard. We already have this one. Okay. But to share, to disseminate this information is, I think uh, using this uh, forum, yes. I think it's very, uh, uh, it's good uh, to share the information to the public. Yes. This is one of, uh, I think, uh, uh, how to uh, protect our people from the hazard itself. 
because the most challenge is understanding race. If we don't understand about the race, so we have the high race. And uh, as a, uh, a possibility to uh, facing the disaster. Okay. So, yes, I think preparedness is never ending process. Because if we talk about the disaster, we have to deal with the hazard, it's a natural phenomena. And then the other thing is vulnerability. Vulnerability is deal with the people, the community, the social aspect, the behavior of the people itself. So yes, we have to prepare, be prepared. Mm -hmm. So in Indonesia, I think like in Japan, we try to make people understand about the race. We have 10 type of uh, uh, disaster in Indonesia with uh, our application mm. from uh, hydrometeorological and also uh, geological and also uh, 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 biological. The most disaster is hydrometeorological, is uh, influenced by uh, meteorological and also in the geophysical. Okay. So, I think I agree with uh, His Excellency. <laughs> okay, preparedness is very important, communication is very important. Uh, yeah. Back to Ambassador Isi. So how does the government or the uh, related authorities uh, to communicate uh, all the n information needed that the, the community have to know about disaster? Just say, for example, about tsunami, about uh, earthquake, so how you share the information? Thank you. Uh, as I mentioned, we do have a disaster map. map yes. uh, we have a basic uh, action plan when disaster happens. And uh, we have a division of labor, evacuation plan, and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, there is a war early warning system. Uh, it's very important, as you mentioned, and the information sharing system as well. And. Uh, in addition to that, always uh, drill and exercise in is important. Not mm -hmm. only to get used to where to go yes. after disaster happens, but also to know the plan. You come to know the plan when you do exercise. So th these are the way to let more people, as many as possible, mm -hmm. uh, to know what they have to do if something happens. But once something happens, it's up to them how to, how to deal with it. So we can do a lot of things before it happens. Government can do a lot of things before it happens. But once it happens, it's up to each individual to find their way out. Okay, thank you, Ambassador Ishii. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think it, that's the end of the first section. And later, I will give you an opportunity to raise questions. We got a break, and uh, oh, there is a beautiful singer on my right side here, Yuka Tamada. Uh, he is a mix, yeah, and managed to sit at the fourth position. Oh, good luck! Yes. Okay. And <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, here is Yuka Tamada with the song "Berita Kepada Kawan." Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, how are you? You're fine. You're just fine. You're not great or anything. Just fine. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Yuka Tamada. Uh, you might think that I'm Japanese because of my name. Well, you're half right because my dad is Japanese. So it means I'm half Japanese but half Indonesian. So that's why last night I am, uh, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with some sort of dilemma right now because Japan's under-19 national football team beat us 2-0. to zero. I don't know what to feel. I want to feel happy, but at the same time, because Indonesia is where I was born in, you know, I was born in here, you know, I, I speak Indonesian almost every day of my life, and they beat us two to zero. Two to zero. This is our only chance to go to the World Cup, and then it's gone like that in just a span of 90 minutes. 
but it's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a little bit of a, you know, football fan. I'm a little bit shocked, a little bit sad, but I will be here to entertain, to entertain you guys, yes? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I want to speak Japanese, but I don't want to um, humiliate myself, so I'm just going to refrain myself from that, yeah. Uh, so this song is an Indonesian song by one of the legends, uh, Ebit Gede. If you guys know this song, uh, pasti tahu lah ya. <laughs> Sing it with me. Yeah. Perjalanan ini terasa sangat menyedihkan. Sayang engkau tak duduk di sampingku kawan Banyak cerita yang mestinya kau saksikan Di tanah kering bebatuan Pas batu jalanan Hati tergetar Menatap kering Rerumputan Perjalanan ini pun Seperti jadi seksi Gembala kecil Menangis sedih Coba dengar apa jawabnya Ketika dia ku tanya mengapa Bapak ibunya telah lama mati Di telan bencana tanah ini Sesampai Kabarkan semuanya kepada karang, kepada ombak, kepada matahari. Tetapi semua diam, tetapi semua bisu. Tinggal aku sendiri, terpaku menatap langit. Di tanahku terjadi bencana Mungkin Tuhan mulai kusan Melihat tingkah kita Yang selalu salah dan bangga Dengan dosa-dosa Atau alam mulai enggan Bersahabat dengan kita Coba kita bertanya pada rumput yang bergoyang oh, oh.
kepada ombak kepada karat kepada matahari tetapi semua diam tetapi semua bisu tinggal aku sendiri terpaku menatap lagi Tingkah kita yang selalu salah dan bangga dengan dosa-dosa Atau alam mulai enggan bersahabat dengan kita Coba kita bertanya pada rumput yang bergoyang Diplomatic Forum is brought to you by RRI World Service, Voice of Indonesia. Yes, uh, there was a tragedy and that was a sad news. As we got another sad news this morning, a flight lion has missing contact on 6.35 Western Indonesia Standard Time. This flight has 178 passengers on board, all, I mean, 178 adults, one child, and two babies and the cruise there are five crews and the VIC is Captain Bafe Suneja and Harfino we just may pray so it is just a dream not a real bad news so everybody is helped by the God and they are in good condition. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, now we are coming to the second segment of this diplomatic forum. And for the first question, I will go to Pa Bernardus. Pa Bernardus, in your assessment, has Indonesia reached UN standards for disaster mitigation? Thank you for the question. I think since 2005, we have tried to, uh, as a best, to comply with uh, UN standards. In this case, by complying with the Yugo Framework for Actions, against, from Japan, I think Yugo Framework for Actions, uh, for disaster risk reduction 2005-2015, including for disaster mitigation. After that, we also try to fulfill the requirements mandated by uh, the subsequent UN instruments, particularly uh, the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction 2015-2030. We try to implement all relevant UN instruments, mm -hmm. including also the Sustainable Development Goals and Paris Agreement on Climate Change in all over Indonesia, step by step and gradually. As you know, uh, our country, Indonesia, is a very fast, 
while our budget for disaster prevention and mitigation is very limited, and it is unrealistic to implement all UN recommendations at the same time at every municipal level. It takes time, I think, uh, uh, and we need to support from the local governments and the private sector. For Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, we have uh, seven targets that we uh, commit to achieve. First, substantially reduce global disaster for mortality, and then reduce the number of affected people globally, and reduce the direct uh, disaster economic losses. We have the experience, we lost uh, 19 uh, trillion rupiahs when uh, Gunung Agung uh, eruption in yes. 2017. And then also substantially reduce disaster damage to critical infrastructure and substantially increase the number of uh, countries with national and local disaster risk reduction uh, strategies. Now our effort to uh, introduce the uh, risk analysis and also uh, uh, make a disaster management plan in the local uh, government, now more than 200 uh, local government already has this uh, uh, disaster management plan because disaster is about uh, management so start from uh, risk analysis and also make a disaster management plan and then uh, also uh, increase enhance international cooperation and uh, the last one uh, increase the av uh, availability and access to multi-hazard early warning system. Now we're developing this uh, system in PNBB and we uh, work together, collaborate with uh, uh, PMKG and also another uh, institution to uh, provide the information to the people, uh, especially for the warning. Thank you. Okay, uh, as you said, that the disaster uh, Handling with disasters like uh, management, so so how could how do you access the management of handling disaster in this country from the top, the central into the uh, uh, the lowest level, um, for example, lura or kepala desa, since. Uh, during the Palu, Dongala uh, disaster, many people complain that it seems that the local government were not ready to face that. Yeah, disaster is everybody business, I think, you know, at all level. So, impacted all the uh, people, not only the government, but also the local and also the community. The research in Japan is, uh, I think, is very interesting. More than 35 people in the uh, Kobe earthquake, 35 uh, percent safe because they can save their self, self-assistance, 35 percent. And 32 percent, they save because of the family, they help by family. And then 28 percent is saved by the community surround them. It means that 95 percent, they save because of the community. Mm -hmm. So we have the program, not only the, for the government, because everybody business, it means that the actors is from uh, government and then uh, private sector and also the community. Again, that preparedness is never ending process. Okay. We have the uh, program right now, uh, resilience village, so in the community level we have. And then also we try to educate and uh, make a training and also exercise in the local government, in the uh, municipal and district level, mm -hmm. as well as in the national. We work very hard to uh, introduce the system, the management, not only disaster management, but also in the form of prevention and also the emergency management and also the recovery management. Yeah, we, we have the training center and we, we uh, work together with the line ministries. We work with the uh, Ministry of uh, Home Affairs mm -hmm. to uh, train the, the uh, what we call the, the governor uh, uh, official. And also we have the one day, we, we actually we, we learn from Japan. We, now we have the National Disaster uh, Prevention Day every uh, 26th of April, Japan 1st September. 
So we, 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 we all, uh, already done twice. Uh, first, in 2017, we, we make an uh, exercise and also uh, uh, exercise in, in simulation ex exercise in whole country. At that time, 10.5 people uh, involved in this uh, exercise and simulation. And the last one in 2018, exercise and simulation uh, involved uh, uh, 30.6 million people. Mm -hmm. It's very simple exercise, very simple exercise, just to observe uh, their uh, our, our our building is okay. prepared enough for the uh, facing the disaster. For okay. example, the the uh, evacuation route sign, yes. and then also for the expired of uh, our uh, uh, fire this extinguisher something like this it's very simple okay okay thank you Robert. No, so it means yeah. that there, is, there are trainings there are educations uh, with the local government with the local community and uh, Ambassador Ishii uh, Pat Bernardus mentioned two times about uh, cooperation with Japan how do you assess the cooperation between uh, Indonesia in this case uh, just say BNPB with Japan the disaster management agency I, I think we have learned from each other, yes. simply because we have the same kind of natural disasters, mm -hmm. particularly earthquake. Uh, we helped uh, Aceh uh, when a uh, great earthquake happened over there. We are still helping them. Mm -hmm. You know, we are helping uh, the organization of the evacuation drill over there in some of their high schools. Mm -hmm. And we have constructed what we call tsunami pole mm -hmm. to show the height of tsunami and the time it took to reach that place so that every local pe person can see that and then once something happens they just run away from okay. that so I think uh, and Indonesian people particularly from those people in Aceh send us a message of uh, encouragement at the time of our earthquake so I, I think the help is not one way it, it's a learning process for both sides and by the way uh, uh, there the, the, there are many commemoration dates, but uh, there is one addition that is the uh, 5th of November, mm. one week time, there will be an uh, International Day for Tsunami, uh, adopted and approved by United Nations. So we will have what we call the, the high school uh, student uh, summit meeting for tsunami education in Japan, and uh, there will be some participation from Indonesia as well. Okay, one more question, uh, Ambassador Rishi. So, um, there is already many good management there. So now, let's talk about fun, because fun is really very important during this disaster. So how does your uh, country provide and manage the fun? It, it's always difficult, but as Pa Gunadus mentioned, it, disaster management is everybody's job. Yes. Uh, I think uh, the, the, so the qu uh, the key is coordination and division of labor. Mm. Uh, there is a fund coming from uh, local government. There is a fund from cent central government. Local government has to be more ready to talk about the local management, uh, relocation mm. of housing and so on and so forth. But once major scale disaster happens, uh, they, they we will come up with supplementary budget most of the time to support activities of those local communities. So it's a division of labor as well as a coordination. It's everybody's job. Okay, thank you, uh, Ambassador Ishii. So uh, it seems that this is the end of the second segment. Uh, we will come later to the third segment. And I still remember that I give you an opportunity to raise question before we come to the end of this third segment later. This diplomatic forum is brought to you by RRE World Service, Voice of Indonesia. Okay, uh, th thank you. Um, now to Pak Fiat Moko. Uh, it seems that there are many things have been done uh, to just say to prevent for, for the prevention mitigation 
starting from the uh, education and uh, profiling the uh, the fund also so from the uh, association of indonesian geologists so what kind of suggestions do you have for the government of indonesia to say maybe we cannot stop this earthquake we cannot stop this disaster <coughs> that's why ambassador ishi said that we are not ready yet for this so is there any uh, no suggestions for the government yeah, well, well, I think uh, Yagi is also really has a concern uh, for that, and I think we already notified that and there should be some uh, missing link uh, between what we have prepared, say, like from the BNBB, from the central government, mm. because uh, everybody knows that, that I think uh, some like a procedure or, or mitigation strategy is already built up before. But the problem is there uh, f only very limited thing that going down mm. to the to the lower level le like what uh, you say about the kepala desa or yes. chamat. Yes. So I think there's some missing link there. Why why uh, this situation happen? So I think uh, many time I said to the to the media or even to the government that we have to really have a system to build the. Uh, system to well, to increase the awareness of the people. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that we we already propose is through uh, education to education and ed education level from the elementary <coughs> school, for example. So maybe we can put uh, any uh, mitigation education going down to the uh, kids to the school kids the elementary school so we we hope that uh every well, i don't know every every month or every week there should be some like uh training or uh well, disaster drill mm. uh, so there there will be some something uh they will think about it in their brain and i think japan is already done pretty good because everybody is already maybe almost everybody already aware about the disaster while in indonesia i think uh in jakarta maybe people know it but when we go down say like in palu uh only very limited people there so that's that's only one one thing that we already proposing to everybody i think okay uh priyat moko you said that education is very important yes of course we cannot say no for that but uh this is a very sad experience. Maybe some of us know that uh, in 2004, 2006, tsunami in Aceh? Oh, oh, 2004, tsunami in Aceh. And s when you come to Aceh and ask <coughs> the kids there, uh, do you know tsunami? And they say, what is tsunami? It's kind of food? It's kind of being? So where is the, the, I mean, the continuation of education about this? Yeah, I think that that's what I said before. Uh, that's the the Indonesian situation at at uh, currently actually. So I think it's need uh, everybody attention to to really uh, put this issue to our brain, our thing mm. about it. Okay, uh, Ambassador Ishi, uh, Pak Priyat Moko just said that Japan is one good example for this mitigation. So how is uh, the mitigation education in your country? Once again, we are not perfect either. You know, I, I talked about the, the, the I, I think, the, the disaster reduction drills and exercise, uh, tsunami poles and everything. But uh, when we had a Tohoku earthquake uh, in 2011, we found a 200-year-old stone monument mm. existing there saying that Monuments, kind of monument. Monument, yeah, yes. sort of storm monument. Okay. Uh, saying that tsunami reached here, so oh. don't build houses behind here. See. It's uh, like a 200 year old. Mm. Then people still built a lot of houses under there. So we didn't learn perfect lessons from, from the mm. past. And, and uh, everybody in the past was trying to leave mm. some signs, warning for the future generation. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what we are trying to do. As I mentioned, nobody is perfect. So I think the best thing we can do is to learn lessons from what happened and mm -hmm. be better prepared for the next time. And for that, 
education, education, education. It's very, very important. You, I, I simply cannot emphasize the importance of, of it. Education. And just in addition to that, human resource development for the natural disaster management is also very important. After earthquake, local government is just overcome by the impact of it. Yeah. The more pe personnel who are educated, trained for disaster management, the better. Mm -hmm. So we are not only doing exercise, but also the capacity building for those who are used to the, 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 the disaster management. That's also very, very important, I think. Okay, thank you, Ambassador Ishii. Uh, yes, Bernardus, do we, do we, I have never been to Aceh. But I, I don't know. Do we have this kind of monuments in Aceh? Yes, I think we we have the museum in Aceh mm. as a part of the monument. I think international is also uh, support this uh, uh, building the uh, build this uh, monument. And then this is uh, for physically, but uh, for uh, mentally or uh, education. We now also has learn from the past that we now we have the program we call a safe school sorry safe school safe school yeah okay. school and madrasa in indonesia so we make sure the 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 physically of the school itself is safe and also the management and also we train the uh, a student how to deal with the disaster in the uh, surround them and one of the experiences good experience in palu in smp 10 at the time, uh, some uh, a student is still there uh, after the shock and also the tsunami, and they evacuate not to the main uh, kid but in the backyard, uh, 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 back kid, and they save because they train yes. by the, this program. I think it's, uh, we still have the good example. It's just a matter of time, I think. Yes. Uh, maybe 10 or... Uh, because a mitigation program is takes time. Maybe 10 or uh, 20 years will, uh, 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 will be better. Because Japan is very long experience to uh, conduct the training, uh, education to the people, I think, like this. Okay, thank you, Bernardus. Okay, it is time for Pa Fiatmo. Uh, Paramoko for the audience to raise question and I would like you to mention your name when you have a question and your organization, please. Is there? Okay, please. Terima kasih. Uh, my name is Abrianto, a journalist from Indonesia Mandiri. Uh, I want to ask with Mr. Ambassador eh, <coughs> about the institution uh, when when the disaster or earthquake happen in your country. Uh, who is recommend uh, to first announce to public? Eh? Uh, this is different in Indonesia because when the disaster happened, uh, too many explain, eh, too many institutions. Eh. How about in your country? Eh? And uh, also about the role of media. Is any uh, code of ethics or of code of ethic for uh, Japan media to? explore or to expose the disaster. Uh, secondly, uh, for BNPB, uh, it, it, is it possible uh, to next the BNPB and Basarnas to merge? Because uh, in the disaster in the past, like in the Palu, one of the leg is uh, air supply ya. Kita kesulitan untuk bantuan udara because uh, too many foreign aid come to Indonesia uh, dengan bantuan pesawat udara. Kami tidak melihat ad, uh, atau kurang melihat bantu uh, pesawat helikopter ya. Barangkali untuk ke depan 
uh, air supply ini bisa ditambah atau diperdayakan lebih kuat lagi sehingga BNPB dan Basarnas bisa lebih kuat. Oke. Okay. Terima kasih. Thank you. Uh, there are two questions for you, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, before answering to your questions, I forgot to mention this. Uh, I came here today with uh, Sulaveshi Batik. Just to oh, get the applause. <laughs> Sense of solidarity. Right. Uh, answer to your two questions. First, uh, who normally announces uh, what happened? Who is, uh, who is in charge of the announcement of the disasters? Um, dis if disaster happens, the center of coordination in Japan will become the, the cabinet office. More, more or less uh, Prime Minister's office, where Chief Cabinet Secretary is always a spokesperson. So he's, he does the press conference, he announces what happened, he announces a number of casualties, and so on and so forth. Uh, I think that, that's, that's how we do it. But I think uh, the fact is that we don't have an organization like uh, Pay and Bay Pay. Uh, maybe it may be an idea for us to do it. Because I think we do need some uh, focal point as well as the operational management point when disaster happens. So in that sense, Indonesia may be better prepared as far as the institution-wise. And second question, is there any code of ethics for the press for reporting disasters? Well, there is some, some code of uh, ethics, uh, like, like uh, we don't normally show on TV uh, dead bodies. But except for that, I, I think it's, it's, uh, it's uh, free for the press to, to report whatever they can. Okay. W what about the second question? Uh, the improvement of media? Hmm? For the media, uh, which media? Code of ethics. How, how the, the media could uh, expose this uh, disaster? How media? Yeah. Can. Well, um, that's media's job, huh? Yes. They normally go there with helicopters, whatever means it takes uh, to have the fastest uh, possible reporting. But nowadays, as you know, uh, like in this country, the role of social media has uh, become very, very important. You have the on-the-spot picture, on-the-spot uh, movies uh, from everybody in, in the scene. So now we have more, more reporters uh, on the scene. and. Uh, the role of media uh, is to spread it uh, to the wider audience. I think uh, that's how it works now. Okay, so it is the job of the media, the role of the media, as long as you write something through, of course. Okay, pa, but that is, you also yeah. have two questions, I think? Yeah, I think, uh, uh, thank you very much for the uh, uh, question. I think it's a very good uh, question. PNPB and Pasarnas is, uh, has a different function. PNPB coordination all the resource, and Pasarnas is only search and rescue. It's just a little part of the disaster management itself. I don't think that we need to merge uh, between Pasarnas and uh, PNPB because like in, in the symphony of the music, PNPB is conductor. Pasarnas is one of the player. We no need to take them part of us. Also, for help, it's different part of the music. So, I think in, in uh, Ace, uh, Palu, at the time we have uh, 10 helicopters, six from uh, TNI, and then two from PNBB, one from Basarnas, and one from uh, PMI. And then for the uh, uh, transportation, the, the uh, uh, airplane for the transportation, we lack of the resource because uh, TNI has only have uh, not so many uh, Hercules. So that's why President opened the international uh, assistance, especially for this one. We asked the assistance for the transportation. So uh, Japan also sent, uh, uh, I think, the, tra the transportation to us. Yes. Okay. So uh, maybe uh, for the next, for the preparation, we need more the transportation, not only for disaster, but also maybe from the military. So in, in case of disaster, we can ask the, for the support of, for, for, for the relief uh, 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 effort. 
Okay, thank you, Pak Bernalus. Actually, uh, there is no need to to be, to for the, these two bodies to merge, right, Pak Bernalus? And actually, there were there were ten helicopters there. That's it. The media have to do, to know about it. There, yes, Pak Bernalus. Yes, uh, seems that we are coming to the end of this diplomatic forum, and I would like uh, Pak Priyan Moko, Ambassador Ishi, and also Pak Bernalus, closing statement, please. Well, thank you, Pak. Daulat Pani. I think uh, a short word from me, I think I just really imagine that someday uh, the Indonesian people have more awareness to the uh, disaster potential or I can say maybe uh, people always aware that we, are, we live and we sleep in the disaster potential disaster area so we have to be prepared. Uh, how to do it? I think that's uh, in the homework of everybody of Indonesia, like like the government, like the uh, people itself, the association, and everybody. I think. Okay, Ambassador Rishi. As was as was mentioned, uh, disaster management is everybody's job. I think we need to pull our resources together. Japan, Indonesia share the same problem. We can cooperate uh, with each other, and uh, I, I think. Uh, this uh, central strategy issue is another example of uh, friendship and cooperation. Okay, thank you, Ambassador. But Bernardus? Yes, uh, preparedness uh, for dealing with uh, disaster is a never-ending process. Mm -hmm. What we have to do is always try to uh, aware and make better prepared, uh, preparedness by doing uh, exercise and simula simulation at all level. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of our diplomatic forum to, uh, for today. Disaster is around. Are we ready yet? And Ambassador Isi said, we are not ready yet. But we need to be ready. We need to do prevention and also mitigation. And thank you for, very much for my great speakers here, Ambassador Isi, Pak Prihat Moko, and that's also Bernardus. And thank you for coming for this diplom uh, diplomatic forum. And before we end this, uh, Yuka will sing another song. Please, Yuka. Kaken 
私が見える青春の後ろ姿を人は皆忘れてしまうあの頃の私に戻ってあなたに会いたい今よ捨ててしまえば傷つける少しだけ滲んだアドレス扉に挟んで帰るわあの日に And thank you very much for Daulat Fane for hosting such interesting dialogue. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our diplomatic forum. And now I would like to invite the director of Air War Service Voice of Indonesia, Bapa Agung Susatyo, to deliver token of appreciation to our speaker. Yeah, and we are going to have also photo session. First to To the His Excellency, Ambassador of Japan, Japanese Ambassador to Indonesia, His Excellency Masa Fumi Ishii, and the next is uh, to Bapa Bernardus. Wijaya, Deputy Chief for Prevention and Preparedness as Indonesian National Disaster Management Board or BNPB. And the, the last one is yeah, to Bapak Sukmandaru from Chairman of Indonesia Association of Geology or Ikatan Ahli Geologi Indonesia. And that's the end of our diplomatic forum for today. Thank you for coming and participating. See you in the next diplomatic forum. You've just listened to Diplomatic Forum organized by RRE World Service Voice of Indonesia.